My name is Matt Eagles, and I am presenting on behalf of Concussion U. We are a student-run interest group at Memorial University, and we're supervised by the Think First chapter lead in St. John's, Dr. Falcon. So I want to begin by saying something that should be somewhat obvious to everyone here, is that concussions matter. Okay? And as we find out more about the potential long-term effects of repeated concussions, and we see more horror stories in the media about even the short-term effects of suffering multiple concussions in a short period of time, we begin to understand that we need to find an answer to this problem. Both the public and the medical profession are concerned about this. What's the problem? Well, concussions are endemic in ice hockey. And we had, um, in 2013, approximately 624,000 Canadian children enrolled in minor hockey, making this a significant public health threat. The other interesting thing about concussions is that proper diagnosis is often heavily dependent on an athlete's willingness to self-report their symptoms. And it has been suggested in the literature that by increasing an athlete's level of knowledge and improving their attitudes about concussion, you can make them more likely to report their symptoms. So the objective of our study was to see whether an educational presentation delivered by Concussion U was effective in improving athlete knowledge levels and their attitudes. And it was our hypothesis that this would happen. I'll leave my flow chart here to talk about the different phases of the study. So the first thing we wanted to do was identify who was at risk. And for us, the four uh, most at-risk hockey teams in the area were the two Bantam AAA and the two Midget AAA hockey teams. Out of a possible 82 participants, we had 56 players agree to participate in the trial. The next thing we did was using materials from Think First Canada and Parachute Canada as we developed a sports-specific presentation. After which, we went out to meet the teams and we gave every athlete that was involved a pre-test. They then attended our presentation and it was followed immediately by a post-test. We used non-parametric statistics to analyze our final data. And what it showed was that we saw a significant increase in both knowledge and attitude levels by about 13% and 9% respectively. Another interesting thing that we saw was that at no time was there any significant difference between the knowledge and attitude levels in the Bantams and the Midgets. And this is interesting because Dr. Cusimano has reported previously that from Adam age hockey players, which are quite a bit younger, to Bantam, there is a difference in their knowledge levels. Yeah, oh, sorry, no problem. So Bantam would be grades 8 and 9, and uh, Midget would be grades 10, 11, 12. Adam would be grades 5 and 6. So with no difference there, I guess I want to talk about what do these stats mean? Well, the ultimate goal for us is to improve the number of athletes that self-report their symptoms. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to develop a presentation that would do that. So three important things about our presentation was that one, it was sports specific, using the materials provided from Think First Canada. Two, it was, it was using multiple modalities because we all know here that people learn in different ways. So we had videos, we had question and answer, pull the audience type sessions, and we had a testimonial, which is the third point. The presentation was delivered by an ex-hockey player who was forced to retire from sport due to repeated concussions. We've seen in the literature that this idea, the idea, the theory of planned behavior says that attitudes are a major factor in an athlete's willingness to report his symptoms, his or her symptoms. And by having a testimonial from an ex-athlete who was directly affected by these injuries, it was our hope that we could emotionally engage those athletes and have their attitudes improve. So future directions, where do we go from here? Well, one thing we want to do is we want to find out whether there's a maintenance of this increase. So whether at long-term follow-up, the increased level of attitudes and knowledge are maintained. Two, we want to look at this similar sort of study in different cohorts. So using different ages, different genders, and, and different sports as well. Might all um, change the results that we have. And third, and perhaps the most important piece is we want to see if there's a difference, a different incidence in the number of concussions that are reported. Because if we truly are reaching these athletes, maybe more of them will be reporting their symptoms and that they can properly adhere to return to play guidelines. So that's it.